social media and the internet today is got to make sure you have access to the internet. Um, but uh, but essentially, uh, our, you know your ba your basic your basic page, our, our our logo, which is Social Help Online, is the name of the the business and the website. So it's socialhelponline.com, um, and uh, essentially um, our our Twitter website and Facebook handles. Before I get into that, I just want to thank Carl uh, for this introduction and. Um, and our opportunity to, to speak today and address the uh, Oratory uh, Prep Business Forum. I think it's great what you guys are doing. I uh, not only not really the biggest fan of the blue. I promise I wore this tie for a reason. I went to uh, the Hill School out in Pottstown, Pennsylvania, which is a private boarding school, secondary school for uh, for boys at the time. Which then um, my senior year, which we refer to as uh, my senior gift with my peers, we went co-ed after, <laughs> after 1851 founding. So uh, that's located in Pottstown, PA. I have much. You, you know, just like Carl and, and you all, I have a very close spot in my heart to the Hill School, and I think what you are doing here is great. Um, we try to do a lot of the same types of types of events to incorporate alumni, and um, but I think the, the business forum is a great way to make that real and effective, and you know, it, within the, the modern day and what you're trying to do with your business lives, which brings you even closer to that school. So I'm actually going to take a lot of hopefully the success that Carl has here and, and show the hill of what, what you're doing. So I think it's great. Um, I actually, uh, Carl, everything you mentioned is true, among other things, uh, I'm the co-founder of Social Help Online, which we refer to as SHO, S-H-O. Um, and uh, I actually feel like I've known Carl all the way back to his oratory days, um, but it's, it's <coughs> been, uh, it's been, you know, we've been through that many ventures and projects together. Um, but it's, it's been shorter than that. We were working at Summit Financial Resources, um, and again, just I think the success that you all will see here is a direct reflection of what Carl did when he was at Rutgers, which, which I was involved in because he asked me to be part of it, and, um, and bringing keynote speakers and, and bringing entrepreneurs to address, at that time, this is 2005, you know, before Skype, um, we had a, a, a technology that, uh, again, very cutting edge, innovative, that allowed people to interact with keynote speakers from around the world in real time and an audience. And Carl was walking around like Phil Donahue with a big audience at Rutgers, Masterminds. And uh, it also might fail because that was the first college and university to publicly announce Carl as a mastermind. He really took that to heart. So, <laughs> um, But no, it was a, it was a great event. And, uh, and, and I, we saw a lot of success there. So I, I assume this will be the, the same. Um, let me see here. Uh, Okay, so I have 10 minutes uh, for to fill you guys in with a lot of information. You won't see it behind me, so I'm, if I speak fast, let me know. I'll slow it down. You, by all means, just I'm going to try to jam a lot of info in here. Um, and then we have a five-minute question and answer section. Um, Chris Keezer is the, the CEO of Social Help Online. And just to let you know, Social Help Online is a social media um, management and training agency. So when we say management, we also take into consideration that that's a marketing agency for businesses of all kinds as well. Um, just to give you a little bit of a summary, um, this company was started in 2011. I became a, a co-founder and advisor to the company because essentially social media was on the brink. It was growing. Um, even 2007, 2008, everyone started to pay attention really to Facebook and Twitter and some of the first guys that were out there. Um, some large companies uh, decided to do this social media work for the top Fortune one, you know, 100 companies, um, and now uh, are seeing sales in the billions being picked up by companies like Salesforce.com. And I've been very fortunate to meet the CEOs of some of those social media companies. I figured uh, with my partner, this was this was his brainchild. He's been a marketing guy for years since we went to college together, and uh, spent his whole life, you know, so far in the career work, you know, in a professional sense, uh, building. Um, rea really, radio show inter integration and live performance integration with online media. And so he was able to take 65,000 square foot entertainment center and bring in bands, performers, comedians, politicians in Fredericksburg, Virginia, right two hours outside of Washington, D.C., and make that uh, part of a uh, four radio station conglomerate advertising program. And as social media grew, he was able to basically build a, a new cutting edge business plan that said, hey, we should be able to deliver a message to uh, and, and help small brands deliver their messages on a, on a local level. And before we know it, uh, before we knew it rather, um, we had a business model, we had uh, uh, some packages in place where people could buy our packages on a monthly level or buy our training seminars, webinars, and 
uh, take, begin to market their business online just like they would with uh, traditional advertising beforehand. So let me jump to what I had as my presentation here. Okay. Um, so a few things that, that um, I have listed just on our title page is uh, some call to action terms. And just, just before I even get into some of the other client case studies, when we list things like our website um, and the at symbol, for those of you familiar with Twitter, where it says, you know, our handle on Twitter is at the social help, um, because social help online wasn't available. It's much like a domain name. We had at the social help. Um, and we list facebook.com slash social help online. That's you, literally our URL address for finding us on Facebook. We list those things and we might say before them, here's where to find us online, join the conversation, exclamation point, uh, let's connect, follow us. Just something out of, the, out of the norm, but really a call to action. A lot of times you see things on websites or you see um, uh, a, a piece of literature that goes out um, that might have a little icon and it's, it's standard. We all recognize those things. But sometimes actually telling people to, reinforcing the fact to follow you online, follow your business, find you online, just encourages people to connect with your business, your organization, your sports team, etc. And that brings us into a little bit more of what kind of clients do we work with. Um, like, as you know, just going through the roster here of what you all mentioned, um, your business focuses and, and, and uh, your occupations are. We, there's really no uh, client or business too small or too large for us to work with. Um, being that um, our, my partner is based in uh, Fredericksburg, Virginia, we knew that the web was going to allow us to work with anyone worldwide. Um, but he had a lot of uh, local clients that he had started a buzz with, literally, socially, on the phone, networking in person, holding webinars, seminars. And they, being baby boomers, all the way down to startups, all the way down to... Um, you know, really, uh, musicians, um, uh, nonprofits, uh, sanctuaries, so churches. Um, and, you know, everyone had a, a need for social media. Didn't really know how to profess it in a way that they could um, create a fancy timeline page on their Facebook accounts, or what is that? You know, like what's how do you create a Twitter uh, profile? And all these questions started to uh, amass, and it just it made us realize that we could really work with anyone from the YMCA all the way up into the the NBA. So. It does run that full gamut. Um, again, we're a, a social media management and training agency, and our core competency is to manage social media for our clients and educate them on the best practices for new media marketing. As in this industry, as we all know, uh, media just new new types of Twitters and Facebooks and applications pop up, and I'm sure we're all familiar with these words now. But if you're not, by all means, stop me. If I'm going too fast, ask me, uh, because it is a lot to to take in. Um, and we simply exist because social media now exists and it's grown the way it is. We have revenue simply because our clients don't have two of the things. Uh, they might need to get this type of work done for their businesses or their brands or products and services. Uh, they don't have the, the time, usually, um, to have the patience and the knowledge to want, maybe perhaps the desire, um, to, uh, to, to learn all the ins and outs of all these um, social media uh, profile rules, regulations, and, and uh, new tools that appear every month, it seems. And, um, and they might have, not have the budget to hire someone to do this in-house, and they might not feel the need to, to get it going from a marketing perspective right off the bat. Um, so from a typical small business perspective, that's, that's what we find that happens. Now, again, uh, you mentioned um, Wells Fargo and a few other companies that, you know, that might be larger, and they might have rules and regulations around this thing. I'll definitely address that. Um, but in finding, uh, with the, the clients that we've worked with in our focus so far have been uh, the smaller to medium clients for, uh, for, for business. And then really the personal brands, I'll dig into as well, have been really big. Um, celebrities and NBA players and things like that. So um, there is a need and it's just a matter in, in those, working with those larger companies, the, the regulations that you might have to deal with and touch on that. Um, client studies. Carl asked me to put together some case studies, and I have some really good PDFs that uh, you can't see right now, but I definitely will share those with you um, that, that show the metrics, which is really what affects your bottom line. You know, obviously, the, just like in finance or um, even in, in taffy sales, you know, it's, it's um, the toffee or taffy? Toffee. toffee, sorry. <laughs> I knew it was one or the other. Um, you know, it's, it's really just about your bottom line and, and who you're getting that, that advertising in front of. And so we have metrics that shows 
on Facebook, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, YouTube, on Instagram, on Google Plus, and yes, the list keeps going and going, of what, what we actually put in front of our clients, what they see, what they click on, what they like, what they comment on, <coughs> and in a graph, just like you would for your website, which, you know, if you have a, someone in-house running your IT at a large organization, or if you have a freelance web designer, they're actually going to be able to say, look, we, we've charted, you know, where your hits are coming from on your website, who the, who the individuals are, what country they're located in, if they're male or female, all this information show, is relevant. We can do the same thing at the level that the the social media network provides us, or the, uh, the medium provides us, and in the cases where that's absent in their technology, we have applications that help us gather that, gather that information. So essentially that's what this PDF uh, uh, was put together. It just said, you know, this is our growth metrics for, fa for Facebook and for Twitter um, uh, especially, and that was for the Luol Deng Foundation and LuolDeng.com, or Luol himself. So, um, since I can't show you his website, let me just give you a quick summary of who he is. Luol is originally from uh, Sudan, Africa. He's um, he actually went to uh, Blair in New Jersey, so uh, you know local prep school. Um, and he um, uh, has uh, camps, basketball camps in, in the United Kingdom. He's very big over there because after living in Sudan, he moved to London, um, and so he's you know we joke that he's like David Beckham of basketball over there, but it's really true. I mean, he's got a great following, does a lot for um, the UK, and his focus in Sudan is a personal foundation, which we also manage, which is the Luol Deng Foundation, and their, their objective is to um, help uh, starving uh, Sudanese refugees, really. So um, he does everything in his power to fundraise and build, um, much like the you know, farmland initiative uh, with the REIT, he would be doing that basically to the equivalent that he could in Sudan. Um, and because of that, we've had a lot of unique opportunities which I'll address. Um, we've, we've serviced nearly 50 clients in the two years we've been around, roughly 1.5 years. Um, many of them have moved forward now to be uh, monthly cl uh, clients, which means they're, they've bought into our ongoing service packages. <coughs> we offer, one of the ways that we figured we could do this, this service was, um, one, since we're targeting the small to medium um, business, we wanted to make sure that our packages were cost effective. Um, so we're, we're anywhere from a couple hundred dollars a month to a thousand dollars a month. Very, pretty, you know, effective for, for small businesses, even startups. And we built specific packages. Which Car Carl was pretty instrumental in, in uh, you know, basically discussing with us what we thought would be a great market for this area, for worldwide. We talked about a lot of those packages. Um, and, and we put together all of the metrics, which you can see on our website, socialhelponline.com. That shows us, and again, this is something I, I plan to show, but all, basically a checklist of all of the things that we do under the management criteria for each one of those packages. And obviously as you buy a social setup all the way to a social mogul package, you have more options that we check off the list for you on a monthly and daily basis and types of services that we provide. So um, a lot of our clients have, have moved on to that, uh, to join us in that, in that process and, and are now working with us on a monthly process to build their, their uh, marketing. Um, so again, our, our focus, small to medium businesses, personal brands. So we've been, because of Luol Deng, uh, we've had the good fortune of working with VIP athletes and um, even you know, um, some politicians in South Sudan. Uh, we've, got that, we've got some exposure to, and we'll explain some of that. Um, we work with really entertainers, musicians, uh, comedians, um, bands, schools and sports teams, nonprofits, sanctuaries, and more. Um, okay. Moving on to our social mogul client case study. Luol Deng, um, as I mentioned, all-star team member, Chicago Bulls professional basketball player, 2012 Olympian um, in London, and um, originally from Sudan. Um, with Luol himself, we managed his, he came to us and said, look, you know, essentially, and his, his entourage, uh, basically, um, had, had come to us and said, you know, we, we want to create a following for Luol. I mean, he's, he's all over billboards in Chicago, and um, you know he's got some great exposure um, in the press and ESPN and wherever basketball is followed. That's what he's known for. Um, he's got a, a contract with Nike and he, you know he's got his own shoe. Um, this guy should definitely have tons of followers on, on Facebook, on Google Plus, and everywhere on the internet. Um, and one of the things that we found was 
when, when you have a, a, a company like that, or really a, a, a brand like that, um, it's just like any other company, you, you're going to have people who kind of um, piggyback on, on, that, on that growth, on the potential. So there were fake profiles, as you can imagine, a fan page of Blue All that had more likes than his original page. And, and you know, we had to go out and actually do the due diligence to make sure that those pages would get wiped out. We'd tell Facebook, look, this isn't, this isn't real. You know, this is just... And the, one of the tricky things on Facebook uh, in particular is that you can say, oh, this is, you know, I like Lou All. You know, well, great, but you're not liking the real page. So how do you go about that? So having someone manage that for you is just like having a, a, a compliance officer in your investment firm when it comes to a marketing perspective that you want to make sure you, you actually are dealing with authentic and genuine marketing. Um, so we built uh, the Wall's Facebook page for him personally, his Google Plus account, his Instagram account, and when it came to the Luol Deng Foundation, we built out uh, his Facebook page, his Twitter, his Google Plus, his Instagram, and so on. Um, a lot of other types of social media, and I'll dig into this more, uh, would be you know, other, me other tools that, that make social media possible, like YouTube and LinkedIn. So I'm cer certain some of you are probably having those thoughts, what about those? Since if I haven't mentioned them yet, I'll dig into that. Um, but for those, those were the, the main accounts, the ones I mentioned that we, that we worked on with the wall in this case study. Um, as I mentioned, he's been a client for a year and a half. And when we received his accounts, his real accounts, they started with, as Carl mentioned, there's actually less, it was 419 likes. Um, so likes, right, people that have liked his page, which over a year and a half we have now brought to over 100,000. Um, and we accomplished this task really with minimal participation on behalf of it, like himself and his team, per se. It was really... They hired us, we went, we went to work, we, this is our focus. Um, so, uh, let's see. We established his accounts much like one would establish a, a URL domain for a website. Um, and we made them unique, and, and really here's how. Um, they, they bought our social media package, which was the social mogul package, which allowed us to do daily posts on their behalf, daily tweets on their behalf. Um, we averaged five to six posts per Olympic event. And, and regular NBA games. So every time he had an NBA game, we were posting content. What do you think of this shot? Oh, did you see that? Really trying to engage with his target audience, just like you would any type of brand. But these, these events, these basketball games, allowed us to uh, make it more interactive. And it was great, because you actually have another medium, television, that we, uh, that we can now watch on the internet. And we can now go back and forth and build in our social media campaign to go in sync with that in real time. And the human element of what we do was really important a lot of companies will go back and forth on this. There's some great tools out there, but we think that uh, being 100% U.S. based, 100% real people, um, and not, if you will, robots or applications, makes it much easier. I mean, in the end, in the end, you're going online in your free time on these social media platforms to have conversations with real people, to to learn about something. The last thing you really want to do is talk to like an email server or an automatic reply feedback. So that was important to us, and then actually that type of methodology uh, in, our, in our mindset and, and our results has proven true that you, you get more authentic interactions, which is what it's all about, and engagements. Um, we would met an average of uh, uh, 20 tweets or retweets per event was, a, was our, our focus on Twitter. I don't know if you're all familiar with retweeting, but when you tweet on Twitter, um, <laughs> there's, a, there's a 140 character limit. Okay, let me back up for a second. Facebook allows you to give images, videos, posts. There's so much that goes into Facebook that you can do for your business. It becomes your website online. And, and everyone's connected to it. And I have some friends, parents now, who will never go to Google to search for anything anymore because they know that information is going to be on Facebook and all their friends are there. And honestly, they're, they're retired and they just that's where they want to go chat if they, if they want to. And it's not every parent <laughs> or, or, or relative that feels that way, but it is slowly becoming the norm. Um, my, my, sister, my sister holds a, a very high uh, communications and, and PR position with a, with a uh, uh, with CES, Commuter, uh, CEA rather, uh, Consumer Electronics Association. There was a point when she didn't want to be on Facebook and Twitter at all, and you know, for privacy, for fear of her putting her, her kids info out there, makes sense. Um, it's your job to protect your children and your information. But from a personal level, that's what she was worried about. Now she's being in this space and seeing it grow, as we all have, 
She's tweet right now. CES is going on in Vegas. It's 150,000 people. It's the largest trade show in the country. She's tweeting at 5 a.m. when she's on TV about what the CEO is talking about, about what the events are doing. She's posting, and her Twitter and her and her <coughs> Facebook are like, this is her week. It's it's out of control. Like, there's tons of posts that she's talking about and articles that she's linking to. That's informative. People are going on Facebook. I'm checking out her her information, see what she's up to. I'm curious and I'm learning in the process. So it's an educated education process. Um, Twitter has 140 characters of text that allows you to put information and simply send that text out. The, the beauty in Twitter is truly really like the no fuss social media. You just go, you know that you're seeing a bunch of feeds, much like you would read a um, the captions of art, uh, of headlines in in the newspaper before you actually read the article. Um, it allows for links to happen, so you can click to, you can click to a video, you can click to a website. Facebook is is more personal in how we're engaged on the internet, and and you know allows for posts and graphics and things of that nature. So that's what I was trying to get at. Um, with also for the wall, we ran uh, contests. For example, his birthday. Wow. Okay. Five minutes. Each. Um, we gave away autographed sneakers, um, and we asked people to post uh, and engage creatively with our posts online, as well as the uh, the Luol Deng Foundation. Um, one of my best friends runs his foundation, and uh, and Adam Andre was able to get us those shoes, and we were able to, to get them out to fans who wished Luol a happy birthday. And that was just something creative that we came up with to, to help boost his, his marketing. Um, we built custom applications for Facebook pages and tabs, which allowed us to show these contests on his profile. Um, it allows us to, to post videos, and they were labeled videos. You know, and we, we made everything searchable. Some even the way that you you name your content, your pictures, your videos. That's all. It's all meta tags searchable on Facebook. It's how Facebook Facebook speaks with the user the user interface. So we were very cautious with with uh, the wall, and, and as we are with all of our clients about naming not just uploading a, an image, naming that image relevant to how it can be searched and found. Um, I'll skip some of this and give you guys some really good tips because I know I'm, there's a lot more here I wanted to address. But um, you know, he had fans all over the world. One big thing for him, one big event, was that um, he hit the, the game-winning shot against Poland in the Euro Championships, which allowed Turkey to advance. Um, I'm not a basketball fan, and I, like I really don't watch games, and I know this. <laughs> you know, um, and you know, this was something that it was educational to me. It was great. My whole team was loving it. They, they loved watching the game and tweeting. It was a fun, really fun client for us to work on. Um, that alone allowed us to translate Turkish press, uh, excuse me, Turkish press into English and English press into Turkish online, and and basically say thank you to to people that he had never met in Turkey, and because of that. Um, we got so many followers, and it helped us, you know, raise, it put us up to that 70,000 mark. Um, and we did the same thing in, during the Olympics. It was just a, a matter of uh, be, being genuine and, um, and keeping the conversation going. Um, so focusing, focusing on what the client wants to accomplish with, so, with their social media is most important. Always uh, develop meaningful engagements. That's our key tagline that we talk about all the time is meaningful engagements. Um, and, and really teaching our clients how to develop those meaningful engage, engagements on their, on, our own, on their own if they want to is our goal as well. So the educational process and the, the actual act of doing it. Um, if you want to develop content the easy way, and I say that in quotes, uh, well, basically the more you know your brand, your product and service, um, the easier it will be to convey what you do and why it's beneficial for someone to follow you or uh, add you or, or like your page or know your business. And... Um, because we were focused on, on Luol and his interest in community and giving back, we pulled that content that reflect his devotion to Sudan, the United Kingdom-based basketball camps, all of his NBA fans, um, and his status as a 2012 Olympian. Um, let me skip some of this to, to save us some time. Never turned down an opportunity. I talked about how Luol hit that game-winning uh, shot, and we, we were able to use technology to translate that press. And we just essentially made it easy on ourselves <clears throat> we used press that was in the news, and, and what we could say in, in a, a short, quick, celebratory way um, to capitalize on an event. We just sent, that, sent out that information. Um, okay, sharing, tweeting, connecting, liking, following, adding, posting, reposting, uh, retweeting, and commenting. These are common lingo within all of these social media platforms today. It's 
very uncommon to um, to know it all and my my and to be an expert at every you know, each piece of this of this puzzle. So um, that's why cl clients and small businesses and brands and, and you know all the sports teams we talk to and churches and you name it, YMCA for example has has come out to us and um, and asked us just like they're asking lots of staff excuse me or agencies these day, days to um, to really help them build on the top two platforms first, which would be Facebook and Twitter. Um, they just simply have, you know, mil hundreds of millions of uh, uh, users. I'm sorry, let me, let me actually get those stats for you. Um, in some cases, billions of us users versus hundreds of millions. And they allow, <coughs> you know, the most traction for your business. It's, I would say it's important to have a presence over all social media, LinkedIn, YouTube, um, include your, your, your phone number, your website, your, your address of your business, if a map, if it allows you to put in that application that shows where your business is located in Google Maps. Um, make it social, make it interactive, just like you would your website, but focus on the ones that, are, that people really spend their time on. Um, LinkedIn is phenomenal for, um, for building your personal brand. Everyone in this room should have a LinkedIn page just to say who they are professionally, ideally. Um, and if you're interested in, you know, a new job or a, a new opportunity or a freelance opportunity or a, getting on the board of a nonprofit, it's just a place to, you know, basically post your resume and have interactive uh, conversation from a professional uh, perspective. Um, but the most traction and actual engagement, the meaningful engagements that happen, are with, are with friends and people who take you seriously, but also just want to have a conversation. Um, and that tends to people will go to YouTube and watch a video. A lot of time, we're not always commenting on every video we watch. People, when people go on Facebook, they like the comment, they like the page, they um, they they simply uh, make a funny joke or, or comment on, on something that you posted, and that brings us to uh, a little bit more about content. Um, set goals for your business to fully integrate it into social media campaigns. So dive in. If you put a lot of effort into making uh, something work, it'll work. But, uh, but don't worry about it in the sense that um, you, know, you don't have to know it all. So that's what, I was, that's what I was saying, that really focus on Facebook and Twitter first and then, and then include those other um, social medias just to have a, an online presence. Um, you want a social brand with your business, no matter how big or small these days. And I have a great quote at the end, which I'll share, um, that, that touches on that point. Um, if, you, if your social media isn't working, you can tell easily because you'll have a lack of fans a lack of likes, retweets, tweets, posts, or comments on what you're, what you're engaging. Um, and you will just most likely receive direct negative feedback through a comment, because people actually take the time to tell you that they don't like something also. If you're trying to sell your product online, or um, perhaps reaching out to a new client and just you know, talking about a, a new strategy. Um, so it's, it's important to really be, uh, appease your audience much like you would any press. You know, my parents always told me when I was a little kid, um, never put any, uh, don't everything, don't write or do anything you wouldn't want to see in the newspaper. And today, that newspaper is really uh, you know, on the social media and on the social web, so that the reputation speaker is going to be a great one, I'm sure. Um, social media trends hashtag. I'm sure you've all heard this before. Have you all used it? Anyone really used it? Um, so the hashtag in the world of social media is essentially the number sign pound, um, and it's used on Twitter. Um, before a word, right, like the at symbol would be the call sign, um, where there's no spaces used, and it's an easy way for companies to essentially find people on Twitter that have the same interests that um, they might be tweeting about. So, for example, uh, we created uh, Luol Deng All Star, I believe is the one that we used, and everywhere it became a, a known brand of Luol as, as our hashtag. And what we could do is go on Twitter and look for, type that in, with the hashtag in front of it, the World Dang All Star, and find everyone that mentioned that. And if they weren't following us, we'd send them a message, say, hey, follow us. It's as simple as that. So local businesses can use hashtags now in the advanced <coughs> settings to actually find zip code based clients. Um, so that's a tip for you that if you know if you wanted to go on Twitter and, and search uh, let's say you own a pizzeria, search pizza, search mozzarella, search you know something relevant, be creative. Um, you can find 
uh, Twitter's uh, profiles and, and basically people that you'd want as, as customers and ask them to follow you or follow them. Um, it can be used for research worldwide as well as local. Video, if you're not using, uh, not working on, on videos for your business, do it. Um, it doesn't matter what type of business you're in, video tells a story best these days through social media. It's easy. It doesn't even have to be extremely high-end. Um, you can shoot a really good video on a, on a Kodak camera that you get from Best Buy. I did a little bit of research about that one. It takes a great image. I've done over 300 videos now. Um, you can use you know, Freelancer to make graphics if you want to, but a lot of people just upload this content to YouTube or directly to Facebook or another uh, a, uh, medium called Vimeo, which is made basically for artists, <coughs> high-end film productions to get a little bit better image quality. Um, and uh, it doesn't have to be off the charts. You know, it, it's, it's people, will, the whole point is to convey a quick message or, you know, I think uh, Facebook will give you only a certain amount of, amount of time um, and, and it's just another form. Another, okay, try to, I'm yeah. done. <clears throat> yeah, maybe right. we could open it up at this point <laughs> to some, some questions from the audience. Sure, sure. Carl provided me with a lot of great questions and I apologize because we, we gave a lot of, like I said, rich content, a lot of which you probably would have seen in the, <laughs> The PowerPoint. Uh, so let me just open it up. Does anyone have questions in the audience? I just don't know with all this how you keep up. Like how do you, you know what? Like how does a, a normal person? There's a lot going on. Right. How are you? Like let's say if we did something with oratory, how yeah. do we have somebody keep up with all that? It's just a lot of stuff. Well, the tweets, the this, the that. How do you manage that? I agree. It's a process, and we have to do it just like anything else. With um, We started with Excel sheets saying, here are all the things that we want to tweet about. Here are all the things that we want to post about. We built a plan. We do that for every one of our clients. Um, and what I would say uh, with Oratory is, much like you know, The Hill has done this now pretty well with Twitter and Facebook, and the Alumni Association actually, uh, and the administration runs it, and I'm, I don't know if they get students involved or not, but I think they do, um, on a regular basis to tweet and to post the content that they pre-approved. And, you know, they've had to familiarize themselves with the marketplace, focusing on um, Facebook and Twitter first, um, having a presence on LinkedIn. We've actually used that to, to draw people to a career development event, which I speak at each year, uh, or try to. And um, I, I think a lot of it is just making sure that you have a little presence across all those mediums uh, as best you can, relate links, basically make it easy for people to find you across all those mediums. Uh, and with your, with your generic info, who you are, what you do, what your business is, what you're interested in, and where they can find you online. It's like a full-time job, though. It is. It's a process. It's a process. <laughs> like their business. Like, yeah. And you know what I mean? Like, that's... Absolutely. And that's what we found that um, it doesn't matter what type of business you're, you're in, even if you're an MBA player or YMCA or, or prep school. It's, uh, it's that, you know, even, like you said, churches, and we have, we have a, a, a Hurricane Sandy page, actually. Oh, yeah. We were updating people on where to go and where to donate. The whole hurricane. Um, we had internet, luckily. Um, but, yeah, that's a, it's a good point, and that's honestly, to answer your question, it is a big undertaking, but it, don't let it overwhelm you. Start small, and then uh, look into hiring a maybe a, a part-time person, whatever you can afford, or give us a call. I mean, we, we'd love to see what we can do to tailor something for you. Uh, and we do specialize in work with, you know, small to large businesses, of, small to medium, rather. So it's... it's um, it's, that would be the best way to start. That's kind of why we're in business, but yeah, it, it is. It's a big, it's a big undertaking at first, uh, but it gets easier. When you uh, when you bring a new client on or a small business, what are the most significant challenges that you see in expanding or really gaining that brand presence online? What's what's the stumbling blocks? For building the first coming online. Building the content, right? Mm -hmm. So it's it's our it's our goal to make sure we know exactly who you are and what you want to say, and most importantly, what you don't want to say. Mm -hmm. um, because the last thing we want you, you know, we want to hear from our client is then, hey, why'd you post this? You know, you have a typo or whatever it is. Uh, it could be the littlest thing that people pay a lot. Like, we have a, a few clients that they will absolutely pay attention to the times that we post. You know, it's important that the, the day, time of day matters. Whether it's an event, conference call, maybe something, seminar, that's really relevant to them. So, um, I would say the biggest challenges are not so much the scheduling for us, but in the beginning it was just ma basically making sure that we gathered all of that content and that we got them to realize that, hey, is what you put into providing us, just like what you would do with training an employee, what, what you put into uh, getting for, you know, educating us on behalf of your business, all the information that you provide us, 
relevant to your industry and your products and services. It's going to help us come up with content. Once you give us something to run with, if you really want to step back, uh, much like we all did, we'll do it. We'll come up with our own content. That's why we're creative guys and a great creative team, and we're, like, fortunately, we're very good at that. But the challenge is sometimes getting the, the client to realize that they, it's, it's only going to be as good as what they provide us in the beginning. So, and that's the same with, with building a website or any kind of press. So when someone tweets like you're watching the Knicks game, <clears throat> Carmelo Anthony just tweeted something, it's really not Carmelo Anthony. Well, no, sometimes it is, you know, and that's the thing. For the bench, he's tweeting? That, well, yeah. No, <laughs> yeah but, you know what's funny? I was watching the game tonight, like, wait a minute. That's a good point, actually. Uh, we have said that a lot of time, like, Luol, how are you, you know, people, fans will say, like, how are you tweeting? Like, how are you <laughs> and, uh, and we did have to say, no, we're tweeting on behalf of Luol. We're, we're the company that manages him, but trust us when we tell you that, like, this is real. And, you know, we do that. We talk very um, matter-of-fact to people so that they have no doubt. Um, that it's that it's authentic, but yeah, that's a question. Um, just real quick, I, I want to. There was a lot of tips I just wanted to give you guys to, to <coughs> so you can get started now. Um, talk to your customers and talk to your clients. Have a conversation with them uh, that's really nothing to do with your business, because honestly, that's what they're interested in. And then take seventy percent of of that conversation, find a way to construct it into a post or tweet, and then make thirty percent of it actually have something to do with your business. So I had this conversation about the, the sunshine today with Joe Schmo, whatever it is, waterfalls, doesn't matter. We had a great conversation and you know, while he was buying a taco from my from my taco stand, located at this place in Hoboken. You know, and that's the simple thing is that that person, especially if they're on social media, will love the fact that you actually took the time to highlight them and will share it with the rest of their 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 fans, their friends. And the bottom line is it's it's the best part of sales. And many, uh, I'm sure you guys have all heard this, is uh, you know word of mouth, and that's really what this this um, revolution has become online, right? These apps and these these uh, these uh, networks. It's just a way for people to share and communicate. Lindsay, just really quickly, I know yep. uh, we're wrapping up really quick, right. uh, but as far as those in the financial services yes. sector, yeah. there are a lot of regulations that are in place. Mm -hmm. Are there opportunities for them to build their own personal brand yep. without it? reflecting or, or impacting in the same way um, so that that way they can create conversations that may not necessarily be connected with their company right. but enable them to be seen as a source of information as a thought leader yes um, you can so obviously regulatory issues and compliance issues um, definitely put the cuffs on uh, you know your ability to maybe even have your own website in some cases right so when I was at Summit Financial Resources, um, they, they, the producers would branch out, create their own uh, their own websites, their own marketing material. But you know, if, if um, you know, if you're at a large investment bank, perhaps they won't let you do that, or an insurance company. Um, what I found the the private um, privately held companies are obviously in that in that industry are allowed to you know build their own websites, and, and we've done a lot of their social media. In fact, I just did one. Um, not too long ago, where we built out their LinkedIn, their Google Plus, everything, just like we did for the wall. And right now, they are posting content that is uh, engaging, uh, even if it's about their unique logo, which really isn't like financial based. It's kind of like this Florida de lis, you know, and it's uh, it's just fancy. And they talk about that, and they talk about events that they're going to. Uh, a good example is um, just to have a presence as a personal brand. If you are a financial planner, or if you are, you're still a person. You're allowed to have these personal pages. Um, there are rules about how you can advertise your business with your personal, and, and that's that's another story. We can get into that, um, but it's worth the read on that, and it is worth addressing, uh, like an agency like ours, to actually know what those laws are, even if you don't take us on as a client, um, as a as a hired uh, consultant rather. Um, it's it's important to know what you can and can't do, um, but you can talk about a seminar that you went to and let people know, hey, look, I'm an expert in my field. Come join me for the conversation and tweet about that seminar the whole time that you're there, or um, post about it, or ask people to ask you questions. You can, re you can retweet or repost whatever your firm has put out in the press. They want that to be seen. That's why they're spending the money to do a PR web campaign or something. So you, if you're retweeting on behalf of your firm, you're showing that you're, you have an affiliation, and that you're educated, and that you have uh, you know, this, this uh, certification to you know, be uh, an expert in your field. So that's one way you can do that. It gets easier when you're a private organization, but I think, I think honestly, I think as as the social media grows um, in general, 
uh, large institutions are going to adapt to it and, uh, and allow for, for more individual exposure. Sure. Well, Lindsay, thank you so much for, for coming down and presenting. To our